Hello. I was tagged by Persephone Jones to do the writing rituals tag, which was originally created by Kim Chance and Mandy Lynn. I'm leaving the links to the videos below, but the questions for the writing ritual tag starts with number one, when do you write? The time of day, the day of the week. I try to write every day. I used to write every day. <laughs> I've noticed that more and more I tend to have writing days now where I have at least three or four days during the week where I spend a good portion of the time writing. Now I'm writing actually every single day but it's not necessarily writing for my novel. As we get closer and closer to NaNoWriMo um, for Prep Timber, I've been doing a little bit of writing about my outline and the characters and stuff every day. So. I'm getting back into the swing of that. My goal is to write every day, um, at least during Monday through Friday, for at least three to four hours a day. That's that's my goal. And I tend to write sometimes in the morning, sometimes in the evenings. I notice I end up writing more and more in the evenings or late at night than I do during the day. During the day, I'm usually doing journal and art stuff and stuff like that. But I find that I do actually better with writing when I write either late at night or first thing in the morning. So number two, how do you seclude yourself from the outside world? My wonderful creative space. But I haven't always had that. And I have, I could be in a coffee shop or somewhere like that and actually, actually get more writing done than I can be at home with a lot of noise because it's a different kind of noise. But if I really need to seclude myself, mostly noise canceling headset, I, I use, I need to get a better noise canceling headset. But I will do that and I will listen to like Rainy Moods or a soundtrack that's only instrumental music. I like Celtic music um, and stuff like that a lot. Um, I really like the Braveheart uh, soundtrack. I like m most of the Harry Potter soundtrack. There are a lot of different soundtracks that I listen to and it really depends on the kind of mood. But I'll listen to music with the headset and write, but it has to be like mellow, no lyrical music. I can't do lyrics when I'm writing. And that helps. Sometimes I'll just go outside <laughs> um, or I go to a coffee shop if I can't get writing done here for whatever reason. Um, number three, how do you review what you wrote the previous day? The only thing I review from the previous day are the last like two sentences I wrote. Um, just to kind of get back into the headspace that I was in, I'll read the last two sentences I wrote so I can kind of get a feel for where I was at. Um, that really nasty inner editor tends to come out if I go past that point. Like on rare occasion, I might be able to read the last paragraph. The last two sentences aren't quite making sense of things for me, but anything past that and then the inner editor really starts coming out and then I don't finish a novel. <laughs> um, and, you know, I need to have that follow through. I need to just get it done. Number four, what song is your go-to when you're feeling uninspired? I don't have a song like that. I don't, I don't have a song. I do like to listen to classic rock, probably the Supernatural soundtrack. There's a couple of people that have them on like Spotify and different places where they have the music, all the classic rock songs and different songs they played for Supernatural t TV show. I like classic rock. Um, so I also, like I said before, will listen to Celtic music, to soundtracks for uh, movies and stuff like that. So those kind of, I can do the lyrics when I'm trying to get in the mood, but um, not when I'm actually writing. Number five, what do you always do, like for example, listen to music, read, watch YouTube, etc., when you find yourself struggling with writer's block? All of the above. I probably watercolor and journal, um, watch YouTube videos, uh, I'll watch Netflix. And what I'll do when I'm trying to get in the mood to write, when I watch something like Netflix or Hulu, is I'll look at the movie or the television show, the vlog line, and then I try to pay attention to like the inciting incident, to 
the plot twist and all different kinds of things like that in the television show to kind of get my mind wrapped around something different but writing related so that if I'm having some kind of structure problem with why I can't write then it kind of puts me in the mind frame to do that without pushing myself so hard that I can't see the forest through the trees with my own novel. And sometimes I just like to watch TV or movies or YouTube. <laughs> it helps. Paying attention to other people's creative processes is very interesting and I think in some ways it opens the door to your own creativity and to other options and stuff. Maybe somebody's got a better way to do a little something and that might be helpful to you. Number six, what tools do you use when writing? Fountain pen, tarot cards, notebook, several books, more books, my computer, my laptop, my notebook, my pen, and Scrivener, or Microsoft Word on occasion, but I'm really more of a Scrivener user. Um, cork boards, index cards, post-it notes, yeah, those would be my tools. But the biggest tool, the biggest tool, I think, other than the computer and like uh, Microsoft Word or Scrivener or whatever, is a notebook and a pen. With a notebook and a pen, you don't actually even really need a computer. It's helpful with editing, but to write a notebook and a pen. Okay, number seven. What's the one thing you can't live without during a writing session? My notebook and my pen. Coffee. Snacks. It's more than one thing. <laughs> um, on a day when I'm really in the zone or I need to really get in the zone, I'd say something like, rainy moods and I usually listen to rainy moods with uh, some kind of mellow music in the background um, that doesn't have lyrics I like the combination of the two but definitely coffee notebook and pen would be the things I can't live without number eight how do you fuel yourself during your writing sessions coffee I just said that I also eat snacks I try to eat healthier snacks like sometimes, like for example, this is one of my snacks I had earlier. I had a bottle of water, which I've almost finished, and the Good Thins, um, the corn sea salt. Um, it doesn't have any artificial colors or flavors, no cholesterol, no partially hydrogenated oils, no high fructose corn syrup, blah, blah, blah. It's a corn and a rice snack. Yesterday, I had, they're called popcorners. They're gluten-free and all kinds of stuff-free, really healthy snacks. Um, I like popcorn. I like um, the little baby carrots and hummus. I like the little pita bread things with hummus. Frozen grapes, the green ones. Oh, I'm trying to think. There's like stuff like that. I used to eat more junk food, but I don't eat junk food anymore. I can I make I'll, sometimes I'll make my own trail mix and I'll take like cashews and cram dried cranberries, um, ra golden raisins, dark chocolate pieces, some pretzels, some Chex mix, some Cheerios, all different kinds of nuts and berries and um, dried banana chips, thing, different things that I can crunch on. That, that's really good. That's probably what I'm going to do for NaNoWriMo this year to make my own kind of trail mix. And I'm drinking more and more water, so that's helping. Um, number nine, how do you know when you're done writing? I'm never done writing. <laughs> uh, sometimes when I sleep, I dream about my writing. But if I'm actually in a writing session and I start, because of the ADHD, I start getting really super distracted. I'll be done for a little bit. I'll take a break from it and then I'll go like do some laundry or I'll wash some dishes or I'll cook dinner or I'll art journal for a while or paint, draw, sketch, something. And then that way, once that gets to the point where I'm starting to get super distracted again, then I can go back to the writing. And I find that it's better for me if I write in 30 minute to one hour increments of time. And that helps me 
maintain my focus. I take a break, I go take a walk, or I go do uh, some housework, or some create some art or something, and then I go back to writing. And I try to limit my writing to anywhere from three to like six hours for a total of the day. Um, I tend to push myself when I get in the writing zone, though. But if I get in that zone, sometimes I don't even eat. <laughs> you know, so that that's great when I when the ADHD is not messing me up, but not so great for my health because you need to get up out of the chair and go move around. I do find, however, sometimes if I need to do stuff like that, I will, if I get too distracted, then I'll write like a couple of little notes on a post-it note and put it on the monitor or in my notebook so that I can go back to it because maybe I'm, I'm not done writing, but physically I need to be done for a little bit. But when I know that I've hit that like super sweet spot and then I'm exhausted and I'm falling asleep at the desk because I spent eight hours writing almost nonstop except for bathroom breaks and coffee breaks to go get me some more coffee, then I know it's time to stop. I am trying to figure out now before we hit NaNoWriMo whether I want to actually focus on the word count goal per day or whether I want to fact focus on like a chapter. I have my Scrivener project set up for NaNoWriMo with the, I want to say it's like 30 days I have um, so that it's actually each folder instead of like a chapter it has the days and then I'll go back through and redo it. Um, this is the first time in a long time I'm actually going to do it that way but I think I may actually do it that way so that I'm not super overextending myself during NaNoWriMo. So that would be it. Now I'm supposed to tag three people. You know what? I'm not going to tag anybody individually. Well, you, I guess I just, I'm not going to tag anybody individually. If you are a writer, if you are watching this video and you have made it this far, you're tagged. Let me know when you put your video. Let me know. Bye, y'all. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Have a good one.